Hello everybody, I'm Marcelo, software engineer at Red Hat, and I'm here today to talk about Open vSwitch and contract hardware fluid. Why do we need that? How it works under the hoods and how the user perceives it. Okay. So first let's start by re reviewing what is contract. Contract is part of the NetFooter project. It consists of a building block for functionality such as net and stateful firewalling. It is essentially what keeps track of the connections. It is a table of six cookies, L2 and L3 protocol information, source and destination IP and port, and it also stores extra information such as state, timeouts, statistics, mark, label, and a couple others. And one interesting piece of it is that it is reusable by other projects such as OVS. Then we also have this thing called flow tables. What are flow tables? Flow tables were introduced in late 2017 as a software fluid or fast path. It bypasses the traditional forwarding path of the stack because it already computed the steps that are needed when it saw the first packets, the first packets, and it was decided to offload this, this connection. It consists of seven double keys, the same six, but now plus the input interface. And why a contract offload? Why do we need it? Well, one may wonder. And that is because OVS is being used for way more than L2 switching or stateless forwarding these days. So with the harder offloading that we had for OVS so far, we could match on packet headers. We could do some actions in the packets, like encapsulate, add VLAN tag, pop VLAN tags, decapsulate. We could even do stateless NAT, but we can do stateful stuff. So if you required stateful things, you couldn't offload so far. And that's required by OpenStack security groups, which consists of stateful ACLs, and is also heavily used by OpenBSwitch as it relies on NAT to work. So yes, without contract offload, we would limit where the OVS hardware offload that we had so far could be used. So this now makes the solution a whole. And this is a result of a big community collaboration. It was a really long term project, years long to be a bit more precise. It resulted, it consisted of a collaboration from multiple parties and vendors, including the weekly meetings, with participation from Red Hat and NVIDIA, which was formerly known as Mellanox back then, Netronome, Intel, Broadcom, and special thanks goes to all these folks who helped one way or another, you know, contributing with comments or with codes and tests. And available since kernel 5.7, it is there, it is upstream, you can use it. And it is also available on RHEL 8.3 as a tech preview and is only supported by the Mellanox 5 driver so far. And it's the only one that supports it. So contract and flow tables. So more on the center than up on the diagram, we have the traditional contract box. We have the change in there for ingress, pre-routing. Then we have the system routing decision where it goes. Then we have the forward chain, post routing. And okay, we need to output that packet, so it gets forwarded. The flow table then attaches on the ingress hook and consists of this special table of packets that should be uh, handled differently. It will trigger that fast path bypass uh, in the bottom. So it will essentially skip every, all those blocks that are on the top if the decision was made to offload it to the flow table. And that is currently a software fluid so far on here, okay? So that's the position that the flow table uh, usually is. And how can we use these flow tables? Here is an example with the NFT tool. We create the table in attacks, create the flow table F, uh, attach them, attach it to the interface ETH0, ETH1, and then on chain Y, we specifically say that packets matching these conditions will get offloaded to the flow table F, okay? And once we do it, and when packets are flowing and they, they're matching and they get offloaded to that flow table, we can check ProcNet NF contract and we'll see that offload mark on it. So that means that this uh, 
the packets will only introduce this connection, will hit that test path. And then contract and TC. TC had no idea about contracts so far. There's no idea ever. And it consists now in two parts, match and action. Because when the packet gets to the system, it doesn't have any contract info attached to it. And TC hooks happen before that filters. So we will never have contract information attached to it unless something even before TC uh, does it for us, which could be like a, uh, a BPF hook somewhere. But we, we don't rely on it. So we would never see contract information attached to it. And it has to be these two parts because attaching a contract information on a packet actually changes it. So we always need to somehow match the pack that we are interested on, send it to contract, attach this information on the packet, and then we can match um, those informations that only contract knows about, like the connection state. If it's established, if it's part of a new connection, if it has mark X or something like that, okay? And the matching part is rather easy. It is integrated in the flower classifier, which is the OVS hard or float vector. Support for contract was added to float sector. So float sector now can go to the SKB and pull the bits that we are interested on from it and append to the mask. But then flower will just compare them. So for flower, it's just extra bits to be compared. That is, once the contract information is available, right? So it's just the, the matching side. And now let's see about the action part. It seems to implement some extra code because the flow table, as we were seeing on the NFT example, it doesn't just exist on the system. Someone, something needs to implement, needs to instantiate the flow table. And what is doing that now for OBS contract offload is the TC action called CT. Okay, yes, drive control and connection tracking, so TC and CT. And it has also has to interface the TC command line and contract. So it has to make this sort of both worlds uh, talk to each other. And TC so far didn't deal with IP fragments. So if we have large UDP packets flowing, uh, we need to defragment them so we can actually match on UDP headers because they are only part of, of the first fragments. If we need to drop, we need to drop the whole thing. We need to defrag them. Um, the CT action will also control when and what to float, and currently it will only offload entries that are in established state, so that the software always has control on how also that the connection is getting uh, set up, that the scene flags are passing, and that kind of stuff. All this policy is left to software, and the aging is done by the flow table not the CT action. But how did I would know when the flow table wants to expire then? Uh, when the action CT gets offloaded to a specific interface, the driver will receive a pointer to the flow table that it created for the zone that is being offloaded. And with that flow table pointer, it can then register a callback that the flow table will then issue the comments on it. Like, we need to offload this entry, we need to remove this entry, we need to fetch stats for this entry. And now we have the same diagram as before, but with the TC ingress hook on the left of it, to have an idea where, where it is attached. It is simplified. Now let's see it a bit more detailed. So when we have the packet coming uh, in the system, it will hit the TC flower classifier, most likely if we are using obvious. At this moment, it's not required because you just need to match the packet based on something that can't be contract related. And then send it to the DC action CT, which will trigger the following pattern. It will check if the packet already has some CT action on it, some CT information on it. If not, it will check the flow table for, for the zone in question. And if not, it will then check the send it to contract by calling an F contract in. So and this step will create an entry if it's not uh, known by contract yet. And then the CTE action 
will attach it to the packet. And if this entry is now in established state somehow, it will also uh, ask to float it on the flow table. Then the next step is to tell TC to either reclassify or to jump into a new chain, which then need to be need to hit a flower classifier that can interface with float sector and can match on contract information. So now we can defer for packets for connections that are already established, or packets that are for new connections, or packets that has uh, the label Y, for example. And those we measure on it, take the uh, wanted actions on it, and probably the last one will be DC action period, just put the packet somewhere. Okay. And it's very important to highlight to highlight that this contract call here in red, it can only be performance performed in software. So if you use the skip software on TC here, this block will never get called, and that means that new entries will never get created. Which means the flow table will always be empty. And then the hardware will never have a connection entry to match. So contract flow table and TC. No, these three things together. Factors that made it complex. The flow table is not to be exclusively used by TC. And F tables, as we saw, also uses it. The flow table didn't care about hardware so far, plus it was built to be a software or fluid, a software test path. We had no knowledge about the hardware when uh, that connection had to be built. And all the management decisions, as I was saying, need to be left to software, like aging, timeouts, and changing states to from new to established. And the result of that is that flow table now has a representation drivers. And if tables and, and if tables can also be a harder fluid now. So it's amazing when a collaboration goes that long and we have two projects benefiting from a common effort. In strictly speaking, what is actually floated is the flow table, not contract, but for easy understanding, let's say contract. So TC and flow tables, there is one flow table for each zone. So whenever you instantiate a CT action for a specific zone, it needs to be only one zone, it will check if there's already a flow table for that zone or not, and if not, it will instantiate it. If there is, it will share it. And the XCT is the CT action that we see in OVS, but it's not the database itself. That is contract. That is the flow table. But you see, is this piece that makes all the other parts talk to each other, the DC CT action. So it adds entries to the flow table, which then will offload them in sequence to the to the cards. It is asynchronous because here we're talking about data path packets that they're passing, they're, they should be handled as fast as possible. If we pause them, pause there a little bit, other packets may get stuck. Uh, stuck. And so the offloading action is asynchronous because that's a control action. We generate a control action out of a data path packet. And this means, again, that CT offload is incompatible with Skip software. Okay. So contract flow table in TC, a bit more. The flow table thus has, by definition, a subset of contract entries. Because it is always uh, like this. The CT action will notice that something went to establish its state, and it will request to offload it. So the contract entries are likely going to be what flow table has, plus some uh, entries that are not in established state so far and or other entries that are not related to this flow table. And contract entries can only belong to one flow table and only. And as I was saying before, I, the CT action data path will check in order if the packet already has some contract information attached to it. If not, it will consume the flow table. If not, it will rely on contract to perhaps find an entry on, on its own set or create a new entry for us. The first and the second one can be performed in hardware, but the third one, it can't. And the flower classifier can only work with the information that is attached, already attached to the packet. So flower um, can't interface with flow tables. It, it doesn't know about it. 
and TC drivers and flow table. So the flow table has access to drivers via uh, infrastructure that was already present on TC, which is the indirect flow block. Flow block. And as I was saying, it registers a callback using the flow indirect dev register. With that callback, the flow table can generate events and send instructions to the drivers that they should offload or remove some entry from it. And it's a one-way communication. The drivers, at least today, think they can't generate the events to the flow table. And one common question is, can a flow table be shared by multiple NICs? Uh, can I reply that with another question? Why? Why would someone want to do that? But yes, it can be done because the CT action, it shares the flow tables for specific zones. So if you have it uploaded to three different cards and they are referencing the same zone, it's the same flow table that will be attached to them. That means that when the flow table wants to offload something, it will send callbacks to the three cards. But in a sense, that's just a waste of resources. And it's hard to see an use case of where that is useful. So our recommendation would be to restrict XCT instance over multiple NICs to certain zones and avoid this sharing. Now, an example of how uh, we can perceive contract of load working when using OBS. Okay, So we have this simple bridge with two uh, virtual function representers attached to it. The way to configure it is just as we had to do it for, uh, let's say, OBS hardware fluid in general, without contract. Okay, it's the same thing, it takes two knob and the hardware fluid knob on, on OBS, and that's pretty much it. Set of flows to interact with contract. In this case, really simple. Uh, the first one is going to send all IP packets to contract. Second one will just forward packs that are not AP. And then do a distinction between new and established connections just because, just to show it. So when we check on that the path then flows, we can see the contract actions and matches taking place. Okay, but without dash M, we don't see much difference on it. And if we add the shan, now we can see that it is a fluid and it is using data path TC. So before this project, this combination of contract and TC data path wouldn't work. And now they can be there together. Then checking TC future dumps, we can see that it is in harder and the CT action is getting cold. Uh, there will always be some software and hardware hits on it, and probably the hardware ones will always be much bigger. Then now we are matching on the new entries, okay? Because we are asking if it's uh, on new state and not established state. And here, as we can see, there's no distinction between the statistics. So this one was only executed in software, because new ones are always handled in software. Now we are checking the established states, now we have some software hits, but a lot of hardware hits as well. And this, the, the last step of it, just start putting packets. And if we check PropNet and F-Contract now, we have this marking on it that we know that this connection entry was hardware offloaded. Okay, it is present on a NIC. And it will only hit software if it has some flags on it, like reset, fin flag, and that's it. 